Okay. So um, for today's discussion, uh, we're meant to discuss chapter nine and chapter 10. So basically chapter nine is introducing us to the next part of the book, which includes data wrangling. And um, for this chapter, the learning objective included understanding how data wrangling fits into the typical data science project. So um, we first start by defining what data wrangling is. And um, this is the art of getting my data into R in a useful form such that we can visualize it and as well as model it. And um, we see that this is also part of um, like the data science process. So it is very important to note that without this, without this part, which is data wrangling, we cannot work with our data. So um, data wrangling uh, includes three parts. That is importing, importing data, um, tidying, um, putting data such that it's in the tidy form. And um, the last, it's in transform. In that circle, it shows very well how this do evolve. I've tried like putting in like a step case. Yeah, so what do we expect in this particular part? Um, we will talk about the tables and basically tables are variant of data frame used in the book. And here we will see the difference between tables and the regular data frames. And secondly, we will see how um, constructing tables by hand or rather what makes tables stand out. Um, the second thing is now data imports and um, here is getting data from disk into R, so from the different sources where data could be into R, and the focus that will, the focus of data types that will be dealt with is plain text rectangular formats. However, the book will provide us with pointers to packages that will help us with other types of data. Um, the last part of data wrangling is now the tidy data, and here we will learn all about tidy data which is a consistent way of storing data that makes transformation, visualization, and um, modeling easier. We will learn the underlying principles and how to get um, our data into a tidy form. It is worth mentioning that data wrangling also includes data transformation. And here we have learned a little about it in chapter five. Um, however, here we will focus on three specific types of data that we do encounter in daily practice. So one is the relational data. Here we'll be provided with tools for working with multiple interrelated data sets. Um, we will also uh, learn about strings, in particularly the regular expressions. Um, as understood, it's a powerful tool for manipulating strings. And also we learn um, about factors, how R stores categorical data in short. And here, um, Categorical data, this is used when a variable has a fixed uh, set of possible values or when we want to use an, an alphabetical ordering of a string. And finally, we learn about dates and times and we'll be provided with key tools for working with them. So basically, this is what we will be um, dealing with these parts of data wrangling. If it is clear, um, we can go to chapter 10. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. Awesome. Okay, so chapter 10 is all about what are table, tables. And um, the learning objectives will be first, firstly, we'll learn how to create tables in the various ways, in various ways. Sorry, we'll compare and contrast tables with the, excuse me, sorry, um, regular R data frames. And we will also convert a table back to a data frame when needed. So let's start with what exactly are tables. So 
In this book, um, tables will be used instead of the R traditional data frame. And um, so what are tables? Tables are data frames that make our life easier by adjusting some old behaviors um, in data frames. And we will see an example of such. So how do we, what, how do, where do we get the tables? Tables are found are the objects we can create from the table package. And um, this do provides an opinionated data frames that makes um, working with a tidy verse a little easier. So here the table and data frames will be used inter inter interchangeably. So to draw attention between these two, the data frames will be referred to as data.frame. Okay, so if you want to learn more about tables, if you run this code, the vignette into brackets table, you will learn it provides uh, a well explained about tables. So what are the prerequisites? To create the table, you will need, we've said we'll use the table package. And the good thing is that the table package is part of the core tidyverse. So if you want to load the table verse, the table package, sorry, you can basically just run library tidyverse. So how do we create tables? All the functions used in this book do provide tables as we learned in um, chapter five. And um, it's also worth mentioning again that tables are part of the unifying features of the tidyverse. However, most other R packages do use regular data frames. So it means that um, we can create a table from a, data, a regular data frame, and here we will use the function as underscore table. And um, example is as seen here. We have got the iris data sets, and um, we have got, uh, if you use the as underscore table, we'll see it creates a table of 150 by five. So how else do we create a table? We can use, um, from individual vectors using the table function. So in this example, we have got, um, we, we want to create a table containing these columns by X, Y, Z. And um, we have um, X will be one is to five and this Y, which is only of length one. So it means that it will be replicated five times. And we have got Z is of this format. So this is seen in this example, sorry, this is seen as printed out here. So from this example, we can note some differences that we can see um, from the, tidy, the, the data, sorry, data dot frame. Um, so these are, so it never changes the type of the inputs. That is, it will never convert strings to, fa to factors. It will also never change, um, the name of the variables. And thirdly, it creates the row names. As you can see here, we have got row names one to five and also um, X, Y, Z columns have been given the type of the data um, type just below it. All right. Um, so tables can have column names that are not valid in R, and these are known as the non-syntactic names. And um, this means that it can start with a letter or contain an unusual link space. But if we want to refer to these variables, we have to enclose them with back ticks. So this is an example where we have got a table with a smile, a space, and number. And if you want to call this particular column, you have to enclose it with a back tick. Okay, um, so we note that uh, back ticks are also needed when working with variables in other packages, such as the ggplot, deploy, and tidy r. Thirdly, a table can be created using the triple function, and this is short for transposed table. So what exactly is this? This is a customized for this is customized for data entry in the in code. And um, how is it done? The column headings are defined by formulas. That is, they do start with the tiles. 
and the entries are separated by commas as seen in this example. So why do we do this? It makes it possible to have a layout of small amounts of data that is easy for us to read. So in summary, okay, sorry, before that, we see this example where we have got three columns and uh, so for you to enter the variable, you have said you have to start with the title, and then the variable name, then you separate the entries using columns as seen. And if it's printed out, you can see it's, we have a table of two times three. And um, yeah. So the summary for this particular um, session, section sorry, of creating tables is uh, we can coerce a data frame to a table using the as underscore table, we can with two ways of creating a table, one from the individual vectors using the table function. And also we can use from um, um, individual vectors as well using the table function. But the difference is as shown above. I have a question, please. Okay. Can we scroll up a bit? I'm up a bit. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so, okay, okay, yes, up a bit. Um, yeah, okay, okay. So, yeah, 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 it's all right, it's okay. So, here my question is this. Um, so, we have y, we can, oh, well, we have x, y, the tilde x, tilde y, and tilde z, right? And we can see the table that's printed, the x, of course, is character of type character, right? And we can see Z, which is 3.6 and 8.5, they are of type double, right? But y we, y, we have two and one, but the type is still double. Isn't it integer or, or I don't know. I mean. Yeah, I, I understand your question. I, <laughs> I'm not really sure how to answer that. Yeah, I, I understand that this should read as integer. Mm, anyone to help me out? Uh, okay, um, I'm, I meant to ask a question as well about three ball function. Uh, so we can start like understanding what's the difference between triple and tibble. Um, and then say that uh, uh, this is uh, just interpreting numbers as a double uh, because, um, but why, uh, but what is the difference between triple and tibble in practice? Can you um, can you explain that a bit more uh, clear if you if you did understand it because I did I personally did understand what what is the difference between the two because with data frame and T bone you have no column names uh, and there are some other differences but within triple what is the difference? Okay, um, so let me try answer that. If if I understood correctly, is firstly the difference is how we input the data. So if we look at how the table is done, this is like how we do in a data frame. But for the table is you start with the child, so that is like one of the difference. You start with the child and also how separating of the we say we do separate the the values <laughs> yeah using commas okay. yeah okay. and um so this could be um as i understood okay. it's that it makes it possible if you have got small amounts of data it makes it possible to for it to um to read like it gives it a form that is easy to read i that is how i understood the difference between the the two but <laughs> because uh, mm -hmm. till the Tilde, this this um, symbol here, tilde, uh, is supposed to be like a sort of uh, in the general terms for uh, relating to variables. No, when, when I make a formula, for mm -hmm. example, I use the, the tilde yes. to generalize the 
the information inside the function and usually used for making a formula mm -hmm. or uh, to generalize uh, an argument inside a function. So in, the, in, this, in this case is a generalization of the X, Y, and Z information inside the, the triple function to make a table because then it releases a table. Okay. So, so well, uh, this Christopher, so I, I think it's more of a, so that the, the tilde here is used to more of a initialize the X, Y, X, Y, Z as column names for your result, for your, for your uh, table to be. Then uh, I think uh, my understanding of the difference between the triple and the table is that uh, in triple, uh, if you see it, uh, the, okay, in table, I think when you are creating it, you, it's more of a, you have a, a key value pair for your, so like your column name, then uh, whatever goes to the column name. So it's a key value pair kind of. So you have uh, the column name then equals to uh, something else. But for a, for, for a triple, it gives you the flexibility of uh, actually um, creating, create, creating a, a, a table Row wise, like the, the arrangement is in a, in a row wise manner. So if you have X, Y, Z as your column names, then when you input data, when you want to put the values of X, Y, Z in whichever row uh, from the number of rows you, you, you want to have, then it is uh, from left to right. So then A, 2, 3.6. So meaning A is for X. A will be the first column. Uh, but the value, the value of x in the first column will be a. The value of y in the second column, in the first column, will be two, like that in a rowwise manner. So that's how I understand the difference between the triple and the table. Okay. okay. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Um, also, the question I asked after a bit of googling. Um, so R does have a special feature in which every number must be. Um, we must use L to specify like it is an integer. So for example, two, one, they represent double. For us to say that two and one are integer, we must attach L to them. That way it means it's an integer. So R automatically recognize any number as double. Unless you attach L to that particular number, then it will recognize it as an integer. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, so basically so it creates tables using an easier read to read the row by row layout. This is the uh, definition in the R documentation. Um, and it releases a table. Thank you. Thank you as well. Um, now I know. <laughs> okay. So the next section is um, what are the differences between table and data frame? So here we have got two main differences. So uh, in the two differences include um, printing and subsetting, subsetting, sorry. So tables have got a refined printing method that is it shows only the first 10 rows and um, all the columns that do fit on the screen. So this makes it easier to work with large data. Also, as we have seen from above, it's that in each column, um, table do reports its data type. And um, this is a nice feature that was borrowed from the structure function. So this is an example where we have got five columns and um, it's as shown. So once we run that, it gives us a, um, a table of a thousand rows by five columns, as you've seen. And um, we have got, so um, this was, this is also like a date and dates, but I understood that it is as written, this S3 um, column, position <laughs> yeah this this very 
unicode over here. And the other column, this is for column A and for column B was dates. So I didn't um, understand what is the difference between the two. So I, I just asked myself, um, what was the difference between the two? If anyone has an idea, please do share with us. Uh, one is the date and time. And usually you need to, uh, the, there is this uh, post position um, class of the, the variable. This posis x ct class of the variable. But uh, the, the definition is that it's not just a date, but date and time. I don't know if that answered the question. Yes, you have. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you. So as we have mentioned is that tables are designed such that the console is, isn't accidentally overwhelmed. That is, we, the, it prints only 10 rows and um, all the columns that fit on the screen are displayed. So what if we want more than what is, we want more than the defaults? So here are the some, some, some options that have, have been suggested. So one is that one can explicitly print, okay, print using the printing print function, the data frame, and we can control the number of rows using the arguments uh, n and also the argument width. So this argument width is controlling the number of columns that will be printed and n is controlling the number of rows. Uh, but if you want to print all the columns and then you specify width is equals to infinity. In this example shown here using the flights data set, uh, we, we have said, so we run flights and then uh, you want to print 10 rows and we want to include all the columns for that particular uh, data. And we have said um, we will use the width is equals to infinity, the INF. So we can see that 10 rows have been printed, but all the columns have been printed as well. The second um, option suggested is you can use these options into brackets, table, um, prints, sorry, table.print underscore max is equals to n. And this one changes when with print underscore mean is equals to m. So what I understood here is that this, it prints more than n rows. So if you have got, if you want to print, um, if you have more n, n rows, you only print m. And um, if you want to show all the rows, you'll use um, this print underscore mean, you set it to infinity. I, however, tried run, running this, but then I also tried running the previous line. <laughs> I tried running the previous line, but unfortunately, I didn't get how, I didn't get how you can apply this. Uh -huh. Okay, so these are also the option, the option of options. Um, you can print all the columns regardless of the width of the screen using this function that table options is equals to table dot width is equals to infinity. If you want to get a complete list of all the options, please run this, the package um, question mark table you'll get all the list of options. The other thing is that our studio has got a built-in data view viewer that enable us to view data in like an Excel uh, kind of um, format of the complete data sets. It is also useful um, to use it at the end of a long chain of manipulations. So perhaps you had the this data sets you have you want you have run this data sets and you have applied like um, two steps of uh, manipulations the very end it's best to view to see 
what the new data is all about. All right, the other, the other difference in between, the other difference between tables and a data frame is the subset, subsetting. And um, so here, if you want to pull one variable, we need new tools. And uh, these new tools include, so we have got, we know the, of the dollar sign function and also the double, excuse me, and also the double, um, the double brackets to extract by name or by position. This fun the dollar sign function only ext extracts by name, but it is less typing. However, later we will see the challenges of using the particular dollar sign to call the variable. So for example, you have got this um, a table object called df, which has got two rows, sorry, two columns, and um, it's as printed. So if I want to extract um, x, I can use the df dollar sign x, it will extract the column. And if I want to, this is one option of using the dollar sign. The other option is using the double brackets but enclosing the variable name um, in quotes. You can also ex extract by position. So you and you've said that this is only applicable when you're using the double brackets. So we want if you so with the two columns, so it means that so it's position one. This is for We cannot hear you anymore. The row X. We haven't heard you. <laughs> you were muted for a moment. I think she's muted again. You place the placeholder. Sorry. Okay, now we hear you. Oh. I, sorry, I, <laughs> where did you lost me? In the position, position one, when you oh. said about the position. Okay, sorry about that. So I mentioned that we can, using the double brackets, you can extract a column by position. So here we have got two columns rather two variables. So it means that uh, X will be position one and Y will be position two. So if I want to extract my position, I'll see DF, the, the double block brackets one, it will print out um, the values in the column one, or uh, the values in the column position one. Um, also, we can use pipe to extract a values um, from a column, but we have to use a placeholder. So this placeholder is it's a full stop that is placed before the function. So before the dollar sign or before the dollar before the two double brackets. So you can see df, and then you pipe it uh, full stop dollar sign x. It will call all the values in the column x. The same can be done using um, two block brackets. Okay, so this is worth mentioning that tables are more strict. That is, they never do partial matching. They will generate a warning if a column you're trying to access does not exist. What I understood here is um, for a data frame, if you have got a data frame that has any, that has got, that is named with an X in it, if you call it, for that data frame, the values will be, the values you will, you can call that column. But however, for a table, if the column doesn't, if a column X exists, it will be, you can easily call it. If it doesn't exist, um, even though um, such a letter might be in another column, in, in another variable name, that column will not be, ex that, that column does not exist for a table. So it will return uh, null. We will see this in um, the example below. So finally is um, interacting with older code 
what does this mean? So if you have a data frame, in, uh, sorry, you have got a table and you want to perform some functions, some older functions, that is, but in a table, but it can't work, you can convert it back to a data frame and you use the function um, as.data.frame. If we check this, so we had we had created a data frame called TB. Sorry, we a table called TB. And if we want to coerce it to a data frame, we use this function. And if we check the class, we can see that it is a data frame. So the main reason as to why this is done, that is um, the older function don't work with the table is because of this block function. This, but this uh, in, in this book, this block function is not used as much because for deploy the function, the filter from deploy and select from deploy allows us to solve problems with clearer code. Um, this will be learned more in the vector subset subsetting. And finally, with a base R, this block function sometimes do return a data frame or sometimes returns a vector. With tables, this block will always return another table. Okay. And um, with that, um, I'll start the exercises. So uh, how I handled these exercises were different as compared to my, my fellow mates. I did like a question and answer type. So we have, the first question was, how can you tell if an object is a table? And we were given a hint, that is we try printing the empty cars data, which is a regular data frame. So if I run the empty cars, I can see that firstly, all the columns have been printed and um, as well as all the rules have been printed out. But if I convert it to empty to a table using the as underscore table function, we see that here it will print only the first 10 rows. And um, we see that it also prints out the column, the col sorry, the columns, yes. And uh, um, the other thing that we can note is that under each column, name there is the data type so we have got this is numeric and you can see yeah like all of them are numeric and um if you want to check and also uh also all of the row names are gone oh yes i think that was a, a feature of tibbles <laughs> yes 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 indeed yeah um all the row names as well have gone as you guess mm -hmm. thank you um, so I've said, if you want to check if an object is a table, you can check using the is, um, is underscore table function, or you can basically use the class function. The second question was, we compare and contrast the following operations that have been done in a data frame and equivalent table. So what are the differences and why might the default data frame behaviors cause you frustration? So the question is, we have created this a data frame that was created. So we have got a DF object, which is a data frame with columns ABC and XYZ. So if we call, um, so this, okay, this is also a question. So DF um, dollar sign X, you can see that we don't have any column that is called X, but data frame do partial matching. So it means that it will relate, it will look at which of the column names relate to that X. And we can see that it pulls A, the character A. Um, that is one way. You can also just use the particular column name, which is X, Y, Z. And if I want to call that, I want all the rows to be called and um, that particular column, if I want to call all of them, that is how it is. So the solution is we do whatever that has been done up here and uh, 
vestibule object and see what is the difference. So we first start by converting the DF into a table. So using the as underscore table, we have we see the differences. And um, the second function, the second thing that was done was we call uh, the table um, dollar sign x. However, this returns unknown or um, unutil unutilized column in a null. So this means that table doesn't do, a table object doesn't do partial matching. So if I want to call this particular column, I'll have to say um, table dollar x y z for it to return a. So let's correct that. This has also been done. You see this calls out the particular function. So it means that um, also how the function has, this was a function that was applied in um, a data frame. We see you can also apply it in a table and a table object and it does return the column X, Y, Z. So I, I want to call the, the, the values in this column. I use the double the double brackets, block brackets, and I enclose the column in, um, the, um, sorry, quotes. So this calls out the values in the column X, Y, Z. And um, I can call two columns using the con concatenate C into brackets, the A, B, C, and the columns that I want with X, Y, Z. Okay, so some more information about this. It's that the dollar sign operator uh, matches any column that starts with the name following it, as I've mentioned. And here, since the column name is X, Y, Z, hence, if you want to write it correctly, it will be the DF uh, dollar sign X, Y, Z. How does this, remember up, up um, in the DF, we had said that it will be DF dollar sign X, how is this a challenge? A challenge it becomes when it can accidentally result you in using a different col column that you thought you were using. So another thing to note is that with respect to data frame, this block um, function, the type of object that returns differs on the number of columns as we have mentioned. So if we have got, suppose it's one column and then a vector is returned instead of a data frame. So the third question is, if you have a name of a variable that is stored in an object, e.g. Um, the var um, assign mpg, how can you extract, extract the reference variable from a table? You've said that if you want to extract the values of a table, we use the dollar sign, sorry, um, the double brackets. So we use the double brackets. We cannot use the dollar sign because if we do df um, dollar sign var, so given that we have named our, our table as DF, this will return a column that has been named var and not the values themselves. So we have been introduced to a new way of naming var var variables, and this is called the non-syntactic names. So we have an example of a data frame here. Um, that is called annoying. So we the first column is one and the second column is two. From the example in the book, we have seen that the, the numbers were enclosed uh, in a back ticks. So if we print that, that is as shown. So here we've been told we need to extract the variable called one. So we can do that several ways. You can either use, um, because they haven't told us what particular thing you need to do just ex extracting the variable one. You can just use either the dollar sign or the double brackets. And um, if you do so, you see it prints out that. The second question was plotting a scatter plot of variable one versus variable two. And a scatter plot, as we learned some few chapters back, is that we use the geom underscore points. And as we have done, so we call ggplot the data and then the aesthetic um, mappings that we want X to be the variable, um, we have to enclose it in a back ticks because it's the non synthetic um, naming. So in uh, underscore, uh, sorry, comma, 
a y, you give it also that. Then now plus, now the geometry, which is the geom underscore point to give us um, a scatter plot. Okay. So the third question is we create a new column, which is called three. And this column, the values are um, two divided by one. So there's several ways that you can do. You can use mutate as we learned. So mutate the data frame, which is annoying, um, or rather here it's the table. So the table, um, and then so the, the new column that we want, which is column three is equal to, now we want column two divided by column one. It's as shown. We say that most of, we have, we have seen that most of the column functions used, they do return a table. As you see here muted, it is returning a table object. You can also do this by um, um, using the, the double block brackets. So we call the column two using dollar sign and column one using a dollar sign. We have to enclose it in a back ticks. And um, if you run head, and knowing we see that the, the, the third column has the third column, which is called three, has been added. Or instead of using the dollar sign as shown, we use the double brackets. So we have the annoying, um, you assign it to column two divided by column one, and as is done as shown. And if we run head annoying again, we will see that um, this, the third column, has been added. The fourth question was uh, renaming the columns to one, two, and three. And we used the rename function, which we learned previously. So rename the data frame, which is annoying. So we want, to, we want it to happen. So we have to assign it. So we are assigning the, we are assigning it back to annoying because we have been told to just rename the data frame, sorry, the columns in the table object. Um, so rename, the data um, and then new is equals to old and you do the same for all of them. And if we run, if we run the glimpse, we see that the column names have, have changed from this to this. The fifth question was, um, what, the, what does the end frame function from the table package do and how do you use it? As I understood is that um, when I ran the question mark this, the table function, um, the in frame in the table function, table package, um, it's that it converts the named vectors to a data frame with um, name and values and value. How does this mean? If you look at this example here, we have got A is equals to five and B is equals to five. So it will change this into two columns with name and value. So name will be the very first, whatever that is being, um, like on the left side of the, of the equal sign, which is not the name, which becomes A, and the value is five. So the, if the same, so this is the second row, which is now um, B, which come um, under the name column, and seven under the value column. Okay, this last question was, what option controls how many additional column names are printed at the footer of a table? So um, this question, <laughs> I, this question, um, for the solution of this, I got from the link here because I, I failed it the first time I tried it. So I, as I understood is that uh, this, the print.table function, um, the, the, the argument n underscore extra does determine the number of extra column to print information for. Yeah. Um, so that is what was planned for this chapter. I hope it was, you learned something. <laughs> oh. Yes, sure, thank you. Um, so 
this um the last one can you scroll down the last page yeah so um this print method that tibbles use is mainly works with tibble right it cannot works with data frame it's not the print method we know in r right yes i i understood that this print dot table it's for printing um the table objects mm. but um from the print you can also use the print you see in this yeah. example here yeah. we also used the print but then you can um, change the defaults. So you can, if I want to include all the columns, I'll just say width is equals to infinity, the I and F, and it prints all the columns. Yeah. So mm -hmm. the question is, this print, oh. Mm, just a minute. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes. Um, where you scroll and um, where you, um, you showed before, no, where mm -hmm. you showed before last time, the oh. print, where we have the infinity, infinity. Mm, so, should be here. Mm. Yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the question is this, this print method, if um, flights, here it's not table it's a data frame this print method will not work um, is that right i think it should, um you mean how it has been written here yeah but so, i think it should work if, if i write print i i i run a data set and then i just write print it's it does print it yeah so what i'm saying in essence is um this particular print method that you can specify the number and the width mm -hmm, mm -hmm, if mm -hmm. our object we are working on is a data frame not a table will that also work uh, we can check that Because my feeling was that um, this print method is mm -hmm. a print for table object, not data frame object. I, I don't know if um, that makes sense. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I understand your question completely. <laughs> and yes, it is true that with those arguments, okay. Can you can see my R? Yes. So I, I have I've, I've, I've tried printing the iris data set, which is um oh let me confirm the class. Yeah, it's yeah. a data frame. Yes. So if you change this one as data frame, the iris, you can change it as data um, as table, I mean. So when you change it to a table, then it can work. Um, Pipe it. You mean table. if we... Pipe it. Just a minute. If you do a table, it yeah. does change so, the data frame into a, into a t Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. No, no, it is. And um, you need to assign to. You need to assign it to a variable. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
Yes. Okay, so if we print, you want us to print exactly as? Yes, exactly the way we have. Just um, call Iris one okay. five. Yes. So this is as what you have specified. But mm. you are saying you are saying if we run if Iris was a data frame and we try to do this, it can't work. Yeah. So in X sense, um in mm. R we have print method, right? I guess. And we yeah. have this print method that works on table is not the um, natural print method that we know in R. This is an, um, uh, a different method that works on table that has this kind of feature that you can allow, change the width, you can change the length of the data frame. So if, yeah, so that is it. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Uh, this clears, an, uh, clears up a lot. Um, I'm working on something called leaflet package, and um, I, I was really intrigued by the tilde. Um, it refers to um, a column name by the tilde and the name of the column. And I guess it's because it's a tibble and it's, you know, your, um, uh, your instruction is really clarified. I guess the difference between a data frame and a tibble that I was actually quite um, puzzled about earlier. So thank you. Um, but I just want to see if we can refer um, one of the column names with a tilde that you did earlier and see if we can do that. Oh, okay. Do you know what I mean? Yes, you, you, you mean like we create from the iris data, we change it to the tilde, using the tilde. Yeah, you know, so change it to a tibble. Well, you can do it, try it for a data frame and refer to a column as the tilde a column name instead of the you know, name of the of the table, dollar, and whatever the column name is. You refer it to instead uh, to a tilde, um, tilde, til, tilde, and then the column name. Is that a tibble characteristic, or is that something that we can, you know, because there's so many ways to filter tables, and it's it gets really confusing between the data frames yeah. and the uh, tables. Maybe um, she's saying that uh, if we can try to make a triple. This time, so we have we had that data frame. We made a T ball. So yeah. can, can we see? Can we try to make a three ball to see mm -hmm. with the tilde uh, things? Right, it's a triple now, right? The iris is a triple now. But this is so, a T ball. This is a T ball. So oh, even a yeah, triple. even a okay, T triple. Okay. <laughs> 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 But can we like do sepal length? Like um, look at sepal length by using a tilde, tilde sepal length, referring to this, you know, okay. like just refer to the whole column. Like, cause when I'm doing the um, leaflet, it's actually like a mapping package and it has longitude and, and latitude. And so you can, you can um, read in the longitude and latitude by using tilde and I thought, oh, I never saw that before, but I, I'm wondering if it's because it's a, a triple, you know what I mean? Like it's a different. Um, well, I, yeah, it, it, I, I don't know, but uh, yeah. it, might, it could be, uh, we can see the, the documentation for, for the Lee left. Yeah, yeah, I mean, see. I can do it here, yeah. I'm just curious and, because now, now it's, thank you, because it's like, it's more, um, I guess, uh, I was getting confused because I, I really didn't know, you know, like offhand if I was working with a triple or sybil or a data frame. And then when mm -hmm. I do a class, it has them all listed, you know, it's kind of weird. So anyway, 
ओके आई आई हैव अ गेस अ बेसिक सोर्ट ऑफ क्वेश्चन सो यू नो फॉर अम एक्सट्रैक्टिंग कॉलम्स यू कैन यूज़ द डॉलर साइन और द डबल ब्रैकेट्स इस देर अ प्लेस और लाइक some use where one is more advantageous than another or is it just personal preference okay as i understood is that um for dollar sign it, there is less typing so if you just put the dollar sign the variables will be listed so you just go and like click on it and um to just call that um dollar sign um but when it comes to the double brackets you have to you have to like type it out the the name of the column but um the other thing that i understood is that for this for the double brackets it calls the values it calls the values of that particular column and like um the dollar sign which calls the whole column i well we can we can try that with the iris and see So let me share my screen. So we have the iris one, which is a table object. If we put a dollar sign, it already highlights for us the column, the columns existing. So if I choose this iris sample length, you see it returns. the values of that particular um, the irisable length but mm -hmm. if for the other one sorry uh the iris one i put length so it's returning the same output the difference is for this double bracket you kind of have to <laughs> type and like for the dollar sign where you just um once you put the dollar sign the iris dollar sign it gives you the list of all the column that are existing in that iris and yeah data. and and also using the um this double square bracket you can use position right um Extract, extract by position. So the dollar yes. sign only allows you to extract by name, while um, the double um, square bracket allows you to extract both by name and position. Got it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So is the double bracket then similar or an extension of just subsetting by row column with bracket notation? You know, when you have rows, comma columns. um please repeat your question i'm just saying is this double bracket notation i guess just an extension of your normal subsetting when you have like bracket row comma columns close bracket cuz that's oh, also um, extracting by specific you know index positions yes 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 okay I think with with the the single one you can uh -huh. extract a column and rows at the same time because if we put oh the, okay uh, okay I see I see yeah, yeah. I, I think I was just wondering you know why there are double brackets and then single brackets for doing so I'll I'll look more into it but I I think I see what you mean thank you okay and right. and also okay. and also if you want to extract a single column you mm -hmm. can use a new function called pool um so pool can be used you don't need to use this um uh to extract a column so you don't need that so you just need to say pool and specify the name of the column it will just pull out the column pool as an f u l l yes let me share the yeah extract a single column okay let me share the link yeah so the, thank the, you the deployer now um yeah you can see in the chat So deep layer now has a full function that can allow you just to extract a single column from a data frame. So you just need to specify the uh, one, the second. If it is first, you say one. If it is second, you say 
If it is the last one, you can say minus one. It will just extract the last column. Got it, okay. So you don't need to use the dollar and the and square bracket. Right, okay. Um, how do you pronounce your name? Is it Shamsuddin? Yeah, <laughs> Shamsuddin. Okay, okay. I, I just want to make sure that I, I, I got it right. Okay, thank you, Shamsuddin. Okay, I think we can end. Um, oh, sorry, we have. Is there anyone who wants to suggest um, to lead the next chapter? Or you will put on the Slack? So the next chapter is about um, mm -hmm. data imports. Maybe someone that hasn't done it yet wants yes. to <laughs> try to do it. Becky, <laughs> no. <laughs> I can try tidy Sam. data for factors. I don't want to do data I import. That's where I'm <laughs> into problems. <laughs> okay, that, let, let's think about that. Then maybe someone yeah, else yeah. will come up. Yeah. Will come up. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you so much. I. I'm so glad that you learned something. <laughs> I was a bit worried that I was not passing any knowledge, but I'm glad. No, no, thank was... you. This is a it very good. good view, actually. You yeah. did very well. You yes. did very well. <laughs> All right. I, I think we can end our meeting and have yourself a lovely day, lovely night, good afternoon. <laughs> thank you. Right, bye. Bye. bye.